My name is Peter Davison, I played the Fifth Doctor, and you're listening to the Five-ish Fangirls. We continue all the way to episode 279 of the Five-ish Fangirls Podcast. And I've got names in, well, it's not a hat. It's a big old padded envelope from Amazon, but still. <laughs> shaky, 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 shaky. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of the Five-ish Fangirls Podcast. So, glad you could join us. Let's start off like a new bird with Rachel Dable and see who joins us this week. This is Brittany in Bethlehem. This is Chrissy in Salt Lake City. This is Holly from Wisconsin. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Oh, all the Americans, happy Memorial Day. Yes. Although by the time you hear this, it won't be Memorial Day anymore. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed your uh, day off and mm-hmm. uh, if you got a day off. Yeah, or however you however you choose to commemorate the day. Yep. Mm-hmm. Crazy that it's Memorial Day. <laughs> I know. All things considered. Can we do this again? <laughs> it's going to be June. So. Yeah. It looks like. <laughs> and me really came here in a hurry. Yeah, really. It did. Yeah, I know. I feel like the first few months slowed, like really slow, and like now May, like. Wait a minute. Yeah. Oh, when yeah. did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, we, we keep trucking along. That's how this thing, these things happen. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, so first up, we need to do the news. And in convention news, um, I, I feel slightly better about this. <laughs> the, the, the grief, the grief cycles had a chance to kind of. Do its yeah. thing. Yeah, but at the same time, it still kind of hurts. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like before, it was okay, but now, that's not so much. This one kind of hurts. Um, but Gen Con for this year has been canceled. Um, so, uh, yeah, because of everything going on, um, they've decided to go ahead and cancel this year's events. Um, which was going to be uh, early part of August. Um, So, um, uh, in their announcement, they said, if you've already purchased your badge and are willing to roll it forward to next year, um, that'll help keep staff employed. Um, So, if, if you want to do that, you don't have to do anything. They'll just convert your badge from this year to a badge for next year. Um, if you would like your money back, um, there are instructions on how to get a refund. Um, but also, all badge holders will be getting emails with all those instructions as well. If you booked a hotel through the housing portal, your reservation should be automatically canceled without any fees. If you booked outside of the housing portal, you're going to have to contact the hotel directly, and it'll be up to them to decide whether mm-hmm. they want to charge you any fees, I guess. Yeah, fingers um, crossed. and have fun <clears throat> yeah <laughs> so, i don't book a hotel for gen con so i don't have to worry about that <laughs> right i live close enough yep um all the pop-up gen con events are also going to be canceled um so and they're going to contact all respective retailers that those would be happening at um, that being said, they don't want the month of August to be absolutely boring for people, so during the uh, dates that the convention would have been happening, July 30th through August 2nd, um, they will be hosting Gen Con online um, to what that will all entail is TBD. So um, you want to stay tuned to all the Gen Con social medias for further instructions on how exactly that is going to be conducted. Um, also, that being said, um, all of the Gen Con gear that's uh, unique to each year that has a year on it and the design for that year is available. Um, so, you know, if you plan on, I guess, participating in Gen Con online and want the gear to match, 
Um, you can still buy the uh, Gen Con 2020 stuff. Um, and uh, that's the official Gen Con like stuff from Gen Con. Now there are some vendors that do unique stuff like um, one of the dice companies every year does a set of commemorative dice that's year specific and they are working on figuring out a way to because they had everything ready to go to produce those so they're working with gen con to figure out how they can set it up so that people can still buy those um because i know for some people that's like a thing that like they always have to get every year is the set of gen con year stamped dice um so but you'll need to again watch the social medias for all of that and if you're not part of it go join the gen con fans facebook group so um they do a good job of posting stuff like that and so some of the vendors a lot of the vendors are part of that group so they've been posting stuff like you know like oh you know you can still buy my stuff here or you know all that all that fun stuff uh so We'll see what exactly Gen Con Online entails. Um, I don't know. Uh, I guess depending on what they offer will determine how much or little I decide to participate. Because mm -hmm. um, I had applied for a press badge and had been approved. Mm -hmm. uh, so Hopefully that will roll over till next year for you. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it doesn't it doesn't mean much to me this year because the mm -hmm. press badge is free so mm -hmm. you know if i give it back it's not like i'm giving them money and i'm not like mm -hmm. i'm getting any money back so we'll see um what is going to happen but go ahead and mark your calendars for next year gen con will be august 5th through 8th 2022 and they have gone ahead and extended their um contract with the city through i think 2023 or something like that 2025 they tacked on a couple extra years um uh on top of the renewal they just did in the last couple of years uh so <laughs> gen con will be back and it's sticking around for even longer so there's that um yeah but that one kind of hurt when they made the announcement i knew it was coming more mm -hmm. than likely mm -hmm. but yeah. Still, it was like, because Gen Con's kind of like the, you know, it's like the, the big cherry on my summer Sunday of fun, you know, the big yeah. that I go to, and they're like, nope, no fun for you, and I'm like, oh, yeah. that's that that's what the the C virus said to all of us is like, no fun for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. We're dealing with it, and I mean, I know yeah. we had a little conversation in our in our chat with the with the, with the vortex boys about cons, and and it's like I, I know because um, some of the some of the chat um, or some of the chatter over on the fan X pages are all like, well, are they canceling? Do we know what's going on? What's this? What's that? And and everything is still up in the air. And I also know the same uh, was with Dragon Con, which is the huge one down in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. and really, it's because like, people are like, well, it's so irresponsible for them not to cancel, and I'm like, well, they, a lot of these a lot of these places, the contract for the venue has to be canceled first, otherwise they are out a crap ton of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Big the time. way yeah way these conventions are operated, they have to yes save yeah where they can, so mm -hmm. they can't cancel first. The venue has to. So if you're yeah. One of those people in your local convention is hasn't canceled and you're wondering why or wondering if they're gonna go well that's I, I'm not going to I'm not gonna say that is a definitive reason but that is a reason I have seen bandied about in yes. other, for other conventions mm -hmm. so it's it's a at the end of the day it is a business decision so yes mm -hmm. yeah we've yeah. we've had several con organizers on the show and you know they've not gotten like super into the weeds on how these things work but mm -hmm. you know at the end of the day to put on you know even just a small quote unquote small convention yeah. you know where you're you know even something like in conjunction where mm -hmm. it's just it takes place in a single hotel yeah. and you know the ballroom and some of the meeting rooms but even then, these cons have to pony up the money mm -hmm. for those things up front. And yep. 
hope and that badge sales and people buying vendor tables and making donations in some and cases. And insurance. Yeah. In yeah. case something would go, heaven yeah. forbid, wrong. Yeah. You're so, covered. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I know there's there's one convention that we've been wanting to go to. We just haven't been able to go. It's, it's called Liberty Con. It's out in Chattanooga. Uh, a lot of our friends go. That one is canceled, but that one is a smaller one at a at a hotel down there. So it's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're just doing online stuff. So anyway, that just reminded me of our conversation about, you know, because I guess uh, Planet Comic Con in Kansas City has not said one way or the other if they are... Uh, this is all according to well, Sean. I think, I think <laughs> Comic-Con rescheduled. Are they re Well, okay. Yeah, because they're usually in March. Yeah. Then they're rescheduled for August, I believe. This is all, you know. Something like second. that. But, yeah. So, that's what's going on in the con world. But, I, I mean, I've seen a lot of places that, that have, you know, like Gen Con's doing online or, you know, doing, like, some smaller online panel type things so mm -hmm. we're not we're, we're not completely bereft but you know like you said it is it is disappointing yeah which you know that's that's the tagline for 2020 <laughs> yeah <laughs> i i saw i saw a meme on on facebook saying can, can i do i have to add that this year to my age i didn't actually use it <laughs> mm -hmm. Can we re-roll, or is it, or it's almost like the podcast for to fail? Yeah, where the the most current season I've been listening to, their dice roll, the it's reversed. So if you get twenty or higher, it's bad. You know, ten or mm -hmm. higher, it's bad. Oh. <laughs> and nine to zero is like your twenty, and it's just like, man, maybe we got that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, please. Yeah. The, the episode is not up for you guys to hear it yet, but right now this year is feeling like last week's D&D &D session. Oh, yeah. Once yeah. that goes up, you will, you will completely you will understand. understand why. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, howdy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then there happened to be an internet outage in my area after yeah that. on top I, of I, everything I, else you know, I, I think my i think my i think it was trying to save me from the like here, i think it was we'll, we'll, we'll be nice we'll, we'll kick you off yeah. <laughs> you have to try to get back on somehow yeah. like it's obvious this is not going your way just leave <laughs> pretty much yeah, go go pretty go much. sit in the it's corner like, and think Reed. about what you've done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and hope you level up. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. You'll get to hear all that once I finish mm. editing the show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And, and, and you'll you'll get the, some of the end jokes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was it was a bit of a comedy of errors last week. Let's just say that. Yeah. So, without yeah. spoiling yeah. things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, anyway. Speaking of D&D, &D, uh, <laughs> that's a nice segue there, uh, for D&D, uh, &D, um, and I didn't know this was a thing and actually until I was listening to uh, a, a bonus episode of True North Nerds actually when they were talking about RPGs, and one of the guys was talking about how he went to D&D &D Live and actually got to play. <laughs> um, so Wizards of the Coast does D&D &D Live. So it's like a con specifically for D&D. &D. Um, but obviously, with everything going on, it's not going to be a in-person event. Um, but that being said, they're not going to uh, not do it. So it will be online. Um, but um, the live event, the main live event, they're calling it Roll with Advantage. Um, and this is going to be June 18th through 20th. Um, so not that far from now. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but um, the event is going to uh, reveal new D &D, uh, a new D&D &D adventure coming out later this year, but is also going to help raise money for Red Nose Day, which most of us know about. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, but they are going to have a celebrity <laughs> essentially <laughs> stacked, like, D and D game mm -hmm. um, with people like David Harbor from Stranger Things and Brandon <laughs> Routh and 
uh, Deborah Ann Wall and uh, Matthew Lillard. <laughs> <laughs> um, which Matthew Lillard actually comes to Gen Con on a semi-regular basis, so <laughs> there you still go. gonna get this fix apparently. Um, so um, yeah, so they're gonna have that. Uh, they're gonna do live gaming sessions to help raise money for Windows Day. Um, so um, you can visit the website for the schedule. Um, it's going to be broadcast on YouTube and Twitch. Um, so, um, so you can get which, your yeah. there. Whichever platform you feel more comfortable watching. Yep. It's going to be on free <laughs> yep. on both. So, yep. And they're, yeah, and they're, they're revealing the new d and adventure. It says it's going to be set in a frozen climate. And I'm like, ooh, this sounds interesting. Cause one of my, one of my early characters that I really love, and I actually, I have painted a mini for her already is, um, uh, basically it's an ice sorceress and I'm, ooh, the, the whole hey. backstory Jared and I worked out for her was really cool and fun. I mean, not, it's not something I could like write up probably cause it's got way too many references to other things, but it's like, she's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I could transplant her into there, and it'd be, and it would work. Sweet. So, well, I'm so I'm looking forward to this. Hopefully, I'll get to watch at least some of it. That's one one thing I, I'm finding. It's like all these things that are going on Twitch and YouTube, and you know the Doctor Who live tweets. I like I have to do it after the fact because little ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's okay. I still get to enjoy it in in some capacity. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so and if you watch it afterwards, you pause if you have to go do something and come back. Which is yes. Yes. That is yeah. nice. yes. <laughs> I know. I, I have tried to do like the, the Doctor Who tweet alongs a couple of them and then some of them uh, when I've done it, Alex has he's just come in and sat down by me. Other times mm -hmm. he like needs something and so I have to leave it playing so I don't get you know, mm -hmm. behind Fine. on the tweeting, but you know, then I don't get to tweet as much. So yeah. it's a, it, it's, it's a balancing act. But then later I go, I, it's really, it's just fun to look at the tweets of everyone else's tweets, especially the um, special guest tweeters mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that have, you know, behind the scenes thingies going on or the, or the little, the videos of the extra content yeah. they put out. So yep. I am fine. I am finding the silver lining and all that, but yes. Yeah. So it's quite easier to like read up the text, the tweets afterwards because they're not going um, real Five time. Five million so miles an hour. Yeah, hour. you're yeah. like, wait a minute, I there there's that one. It's in reference to something that was like ten tweets back, and I gotta go back, and then I missed something, and yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. there is definitely an art to live tweeting. Yep. Yes. But yeah. Uh, speaking of Doctor Who, this, yeah. yes. this news dropped, and I've been kind of figuring out my collection and how mm -hmm. I can fill in the gaps um, with all this. But uh, Big Finish has made a pretty significant announcement just today, mm -hmm. and it's still new, and so we're still kind of working out the details of how this works. But they are revamping uh, the way that they do their audio ranges. Basically, uh, if you know how Big Finish works, uh, the Doctor Who stuff, they have their main range or their monthly adventures, which um, cycles through, these days it cycles through 5th, 6th, and 7th Doctors. It originally, or earlier it had the 8th, but then he spun off into his own range. Plus they have all these spin-offs and box sets and all these other things. Mm -hmm. And they've gotten into the 200 and probably 50, 60 er area. I, mm -hmm. I've lost I've lost count um, and but basically what they're doing is the main range is going to end with release number 275 which I guess is early next year and after that they're going to have basically as I understand this and I, I could be wrong after reading this I've, I've read this several times since mm -hmm. But, I but have two uh, and it can be interpreted numerous ways yeah so so they'll still be doing Five, six, and seven, fifth, sixth, and seventh doctors. But instead of them being in a in a range like cycling through the a monthly range, they're going to have regular box sets. I think. Um, That's the way I'm interpreting. So, it. Yeah. so like, like which, yeah. would, which might make it easier if you're wanting to stick with like a particular doctor, maybe. Yeah. Plot points. Right. 
Yeah. Because mm-hmm. if you look at like the mainline range and the numbers, it bounces around from like fifth doctor, seventh doctor, eighth doctor, fourth right. doctor, blah, 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 and, blah, blah, and, so. and it mm-hmm. has, and like every doctor has their own storyline. Like I'm going through an order because I was just, I just came to the point and I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I want to listen to all of them and get the stories. But mm-hmm. then like you'll listen to mm-hmm. like three seventh doctor stories in a row and then it'll jump to fifth a bunch of fifth doctor ones um and then you'll forget oh then you get back to the seventh doctor like oh right what was going on with that story i don't remember so i can understand why they want to do this um the collecting them is going to be interesting because like if you're uh, because i had a subscription for a little while then i had to cancel it and so i've fallen behind so if you because they they do have a um a way for you to kind of fill in those gaps sort of so instead of the six month or 12 month subscription they're going to offer three month subscriptions so if you have a gap where you're like i only need three more here then you can get that the only problem is i don't have a gap that's three but Mm -hmm. i do but my end one when all is said and done i have like i don't know 36 or something that i have to fill in there what once once the last one's released so um and it, I mean, and it sounds like they have some other ideas, like, so, so that, so these, so instead of the range just being five, six, and seven, it's also going to cycle through one, two, three, and four, mm-hmm. and, and eight, and also, I guess, probably 10, and, and some of the other, um, I think they even, I think they set up a 12th series. doctor, yeah, yeah, so, so they can, so it's, so there, it's, it sounds like they're going to consolidate all of the Doctor Who doctor stuff, into its own thing into its own right schedule and they haven't made mention if they're going to still stick with the monthly range for torchwood after 2021 because i know it's good through march and then Uh i don't know if they're going to do you know a box set thing for them Mm. on out yeah i mean that's I guess we'll find out, like, because as I guess, as long as they have the license, so they'll, they'll keep making it. Right, and them. I kind of like the idea of the box set because then you get more of a concise story. Yeah, and there and there it all is all together, and then you're done. Although I did see right. some people mention like Dark Eyes and mm-hmm. Doom Coalition. Like, what was the other one? Doom Coalition. It was actually like four and then box the, sets and, for one story. And, and I think then the Vienna Chronicles, and I know some of the stuff with Gallifrey, now that they're into their own time war thing, mm-hmm. and then you've got the then you've got the Eighth Doctor's time war, and then you've got the War Doctor's time war, and then mm-hmm. I think you've got something with the Master, and it's just like... Yeah, they got, they got the War Master. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, they, like, and then oh they, have a, they, have, they put out a box set where Susan gets roped into the time war, and it's yeah. all over the place. So mm-hmm. I think this is a, a way for them to kind of rein in some of that we've got stuff spread all over the place maybe maybe make it more condensed and like okay here's our time war series yeah like if you want anything related to the time war listen to these if you come here yeah six doctor and evelyn listen to all of these (laughs) right like maybe they'll do it later on down the line maybe that's what they'll do too is they'll do bundles it's like okay if you're looking for this doctor with this companion here's the bundle they, package of all the do, episodes you need yeah they do have it to where you can search that way i think um it can be but then it's kind of a little hit and miss because i tried to do that for mm-hmm. one thing and there was a couple scragglers <laughs> yeah that so did, it's, that it's didn't not fit. A, it, it's not an exact <laughs> science yet and and i mean we're just we're just reading it off a uh a, a press release the, yeah <laughs> press release so mm-hmm. and there's so like people you know asking like how's this gonna work is it gonna work this way and i think so they're still I in think, the planning phases too it's just like right. yeah, i think they wanted to give everybody a jump start saying hey this mm-hmm. is coming down the line yeah well and yeah. they and they record things so early anyway because that's right. that's what they were saying when when you know the the pandemic hit and things started getting shut down and big finish is like well we have a few already in the pipeline ready to go and this you know if you know hopefully this won't set us back too much sounds like it's not because they're already no. playing for 2022 and, 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 and most of the voice actors if they're in different parts they've already got their own little mini recording studios at yeah. Their own yeah. Peter Davison um, has been yeah. gradually upgrading his closet 
<laughs> yeah, he has the zero room in his in his house. How his dog is kind of blended in at the bottom. It's like, is that a dog or is, does he have a fuzzy boom mic? Like, nope, that's puppy. <laughs> I know. But it's like you're hey, not like him, him in the closet, like surrounded, but just felt like stuff and, and, he's, and a microphone. He's and then it's gradually gone on to like now he's got a better chair and there's you know he's got like actual foam and the outside the, the door of the closet now looks like the target and he's got the round oh. things and he's got the round things the in <laughs> so so yeah so everyone is adapting to to to, to home recording as best they can yeah some of them are building their own zero rooms <laughs> yes <laughs> exactly <laughs> Oh my! Oh. <sighs> yeah, it's been glorious to the watch the progress pictures. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh no! Now I've added foam padding for better, you know. <laughs> yeah. And absorption. for those of you who have not checked out the doctors assemble on YouTube, do so. Yes. It, oh, that I was that was so, so funny. Hard in that my was life. That was hilarious. <laughs> It was beautiful. I, I enjoyed they, that. Yeah, yeah, there's not. I don't know what it is, but there's just there's something about the dar doctor arguing with themselves. <laughs> exactly. And not like you know, not like you know, when you're talking to yourself and you're trying to talk yourself out of like no, because the doctor literally can argue with himself mm -hmm. in a different incarnation. So yes. you, you got it, it, oh, and Rachel, oh, and Rachel you your know. doctor was funnier than all get yeah. <laughs> cat pictures i know and it's i like, like how my doctor had a lot to do with helping out i'm just gonna leave yes. it that yes, yes. But. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. at first it didn't seem that way but oh my goodness oh, yes. that, yeah. was, that was beautiful yeah, yeah. and so i'm anyway. impressed that and i'm impressed with some of the voices because it was just a handful of voice actors doing yeah. multiple mm -hmm. doctors and some of them were really spot on so yes. there were just several where i'm like mm, no not mm, quite not quite yeah but then there were a couple of them was like oh boy but yeah there were a good. couple of them like <laughs> um that's kind of scary how well really? you sound like them except yes. for one there is one mm -hmm. actual literal doctor and i'm not going to spoil who it is Mm -hmm. But one of the voice actors is an act, is one of the actual doctors. So. Yeah. But no, yeah, it was it was great, and I mean, I think a lot of those voice actors, at least one of them I know, has has done work with Big Finish, and so it's like, yeah, yeah. You're, mm -hmm. The rest of them, you guys need to, you know, have them on a on on a speed dial just in case. Yeah. <laughs> but get, get them. Well, it was it was it was Big Finish. yeah. It was it was it was fun for them to be able to. Uh, show off the talents of some of these voice actors mm -hmm. you know so it's like you know they they need work you know it's like they can do work too and a lot of them you know they can work from home and just about yeah. anywhere so it's like mm -hmm. if you need voiceover work here you go here's a handful of people and you can hear their versatility you know you've got like mm -hmm. one guy who does like half of the doctors mm -hmm. so so that was yep. that was impressive but anyway it was Oh my good. So anyway, so there's yep. big finish still going strong and still keeping us sane and taking our money. Yeah, you know, taking our money, <laughs> which you know what? They're they're a small business. I'm glad they're they're they can continue yep. to operate, but they're doing yeah. great. And and a little side tangent with um housekeeping for speaking of big finish. The poll ended on the seventeenth of this month for the yay or nay to adding big finish into the book club and it was met with a yay so there will probably be maybe one audiobook option maybe more hard to say so if there's any that you're dying to discuss please message the goodreads group with your suggestions and mm -hmm. Leave or you can tweet there. at us or, or tweet at us yep this is just on facebook it, all that works it doesn't have to be yep. through good reads if you don't want to yep so yep and uh kind of staying in well we're staying in british territory the bbc yep. mm -hmm. um <laughs> and, and it's the doctor who yes yes so, 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 so it's, it works 
yes. It works. Um, so um, the BBC, uh, BBC One has announced a comedy um, that's going to start airing in June, so very soon, um, called Staged. Um, it's going to even based on the description, I'm kind of struggling on how exactly this is going to work, but apparently it's going to be the story of a cast of a play who are supposed to be the best of the best when it comes to British acting talent, who were um, getting ready to do a production on the West End, but because of everything going on, um, it gets shut down. They all got furloughed. Um, but they decide that they want to keep um, rehearsing and everything so that when everything opens up, they can be ready to go. Um, so uh, I guess it's going to be uh, actors, you know, in rehearsals and probably I'm sure, re you know, quote unquote, real life will come in, um, you know, get in their way, you know, essentially what an act, a, a, a I guess a humorous way of what a stage actor's life could be like during the lockdown, I guess, mm -hmm. is the best way to put it. But um, they're going to be real short episodes. They're going to be like 15 minutes um, a piece, but it is going to star David Tennant and Michael Sheen. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we are getting a Good Omens reunion, as if we hadn't yep. had one already, with yes. the mm -hmm. Good Omens in lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> that we got recently. Yep. And Georgia Tana and Lucy Eaton are going to be making guest appearances as well. Yes. <laughs> yep. So and they have shared like a short, like little clip of David and Michael just kind of chatting, I guess, quote unquote, in character. So, um, ish of uh, and it's up on social i know georgia shared it on on her instagram she was teasing it she's like oh big announcement tomorrow no i'm not pregnant uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's had five kids so you know the, <laughs> yeah. it's it's okay if she's done <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean the youngest is it hasn't been that long so yeah <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so she she shared a, a short uh, snippet of it, and it's really just David and Michael, I think, taking the piss off <laughs> out of each other. Mm -hmm. So it's just hilarious. So mm -hmm. those two yeah, I, are just. I watched that clip. It's like it's only like, it's like forty five seconds to a minute, something like that. Yeah, I've watched it so many times since. Was... Yeah, the, those two, just the the friendship there is just like, oh, mm -hmm. like you two are sunshine in mm -hmm. <laughs> this dumpster fire that is the world at the moment so mm -hmm. <laughs> is, i hope they do more stuff later on like they just have great chemistry oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah absolutely i love it like you no know, i already like them individually like i love seeing them in other stuff i would love them with more projects so. yeah yeah so, um, yeah, so that will be um, uh, airing on BBC One and then will be available up on BBC iPlayer after it airs on TV and no idea yet how us Americans may be able to get our hands on it. So, well, uh, um, yeah. Unless the iPlayer will be nice and not have this region locked. Yeah. Because so, some this, occasionally you can get I, iPlayer to like would have region unlock, unlock. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully this. Not will be always one of them. though. So. Not always. So hopefully this will be one of them. Yeah. That'll like <clears throat> stay. Dear BBC, please and thank you. Mm. <laughs> or how much could we contribute for you to pop it up on Amazon Prime and we do a little yeah. season best? Yeah, <laughs> I, I I do that. Yeah. So Fifteen minutes a piece. There's gonna be like yeah. six episodes, so it's only gonna be a couple hours of TV. I'm like, right? Yeah. We'll take it. Take it. Mm -hmm. Like I'll buy like a one disc 
DVD. Yeah, really. Mm-hmm. Something. Yeah. I'm say like this. <laughs> Please and thank you. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. Well, that is it for the news. So we've already taken care of the housekeeping. So. Mm-hmm at least until we get into the new month. <laughs> yep, yep. So we shall move on to this week's main topic. So let me get my, let me get my bag. Mm-hmm. My bubble wrap wind giant envelope here from Amazon. <laughs> Because it was readily available instead of me having to go all the way to the other side of the house to get a hat. <laughs> hey, whatever works. Yep. So. Indeed. And I made new slips. Yay! So Yay! I, re- I rewrote all of them on new, all the same piece of paper. So there's a bit more uniformity when it comes to slip size. So hopefully they won't stick together as much. And I won't pull out a handful of them. <laughs> and for those that may be new to this particular thing, um, which at this point, I mean, I guess if you're new to the podcast, you could be new to this. So, but this is not a new thing we've been doing. This is actually the tenth time we've done this. Actually, uh, oh wow, yeah, wow. yeah, and yeah, we actually, still have I, lots of paper in here. Lots of slips of paper <laughs> in here. Um, that actually speaks well of us being able to find topics. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so every now and then, uh, when we need to, uh, uh, need a topic to fill in uh, the schedule, um, we have slips of paper with celebrity names on them. Most of them are actors and actresses. There are some folks on here that maybe aren't well known as an actor or actress first, but they have done some acting. Um, but yeah, we've got people that are talented in lots of ways, some sing, some dance, act, uh, do art, whatever. Um, and we pull them, well, I pull them, uh, cause it's just me. Uh, but we pull them blindly out and then we kind of just talk about what we know about this person, what we know them from, uh, recommendations, uh, things that need to be added to our to watch or to read or to whatever list. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So those lists keep growing. Um, so, but yeah, I'm going to, after shuffling the new slips of paper up, I'm going to grab one. And I ended up with three. And no, both. only one. Yeah. <laughs> I only need one, one at a time. We may do more than one in this show, in this episode, but we do one person at a time. Thank you very much. That would be kind of hard to try and talk about three at the same time. Yeah. 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 Unless they mysteriously all, all three happen to be in the same production of something. Yeah. <laughs> Which, with all this, that's really possible, so. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Yep. So, and then an added um, thing that we've been doing is I make the rest of you guys guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So okay. it is. What are our, what are our vague clues? Yep. Okay. Please, please don't make them as bad as some of the mass singers, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear lord. Yeah. That, that's a topic for another day. Yeah, really. <laughs> uh, so this American actor, director, and producer um, has several has had several roles in television and independent film. Um, let's see. Uh, he wa- his birthday is July 8th, 1977. He is from Anaheim, California. Hmm. Notice she doesn't ever give us hints about what this person could have been in. Well, that would give it away. I know. That's mm-hmm. the thing. Um, like, they, they are currently starring in a TV series that is still currently on air on a major okay. network. Okay. Um, 
he has also been in another TV series that we have talked about on this show, on this podcast. Okay. Hmm. I feel like I need to narrate my thinking face. <laughs> That's the thing is like, you know, a lot of you say, you say it's an American actor, actress, say they're from California. And I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, what are the TV show on a major network we've talked about is the show that this actor currently on is this, have we talked about? The, the show, show that they're currently on? No. We have not talked okay. about that show, but the show that they were okay. previously on, or a okay. show that they were previously it's... on, we have talked about mm-hmm. a couple Could, of times, actually. Would it, would it be giving it away to tell us the genre of the show that uh, we talked about? Um, well, I mean, for the most part, we talk about well, I know, same but type of <laughs> same type of TV show. I, I'm kind of I'm I'm looking for hints. <laughs> yes. Um. Uh, well, according to Wikipedia, uh, they classify that particular television show as a American superhero drama. So. Oh. 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 Um. Oh, what's his name? Wait a second. Um, is it Milo? What's his last Amelia? Yes. Him? I'm glad you guys attempted to say his last name because I would. <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> I know if I was like, oh, I cannot pronounce his last name, that definitely wouldn't have given it away. <laughs> I know. I was thinking superhero. It could have been. It could have. It could have been heroes, or it could have been Arrow, or yeah. Yeah. So, but not in a while. But yeah. anyway. Or you know, one of those the, those Arrowverse shows. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so Milo Anthony, I'm not even trying to pronounce his last name. Thank you for <laughs> Ventimiglia. Something along those sure. lines. Milo V. No, that, I think that is it. It's Ventimiglia. It, it's yeah. Italian, so yes, it's not pronounced how it looks. <laughs> yeah. Uh-uh. Yes, so he was uh, uh, played uh, Peter Vercelli in Heroes. So, mm-hmm. and the dad on This Is Us. Yes, which is what he is currently on, which I have not watched because I don't really want to cry while watching TV. Thank you. Smart move. I was gonna say I I watched the first season and I really like it. I meant to like keep going, but life and then, like it. it what I know from this episode, like the the trailers, I'm like, ooh, it's getting really. Yeah, cool. I'm I'm to the point where I just like I'm gonna wait till they call final season and then start back and watch from the beginning and then yeah. don't have to do the suspense and the oh, this mm. is killing me. At least I can go okay. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm like, done. Good. Yeah, it's definitely one I've heard of. But every time, every time I hear about it, every people are all like, "Oh my gosh, I bawled so much!" And I'm like, "I don't know if I want to fall at a show." Yeah. I mean, the, writing, the writing's good, but every single time feels, feels, yeah. feels, yeah. feels. I mean, our shows are bad enough as it is. Yeah, it's like <laughs> I get this one feels already. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, speaking of in two days from now, I wonder how much feels we're going to have with the opening episode of the, mm-hmm. a certain uh, other Marvel superhero show. show? <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Yes, exactly, exactly. So yeah, I remember some... when they were. Oh no, go ahead. I was going to say I remember when they were advertising. This is us. It, like they were calling it a drama day. I'm like, ooh, it's going to be funny with some drama. It's like more drama than anything <laughs> yeah it's like it's like just because you tell a few jokes doesn't make it a, doesn't make, yeah. doesn't give it the humor <laughs> just because one of the one of the character one of the characters is almost a stamina comic or yeah. an actor in a sitcom not a whole lot of comedy going on just because they put po- just because they reference weird al in one of the episodes does not make it a comedy <laughs> oh, gosh. i do like the, i mean like 
I, I was gonna say, like, I mean, there were there were some moments of levity in Chernobyl. Not many, yeah, but a few. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, so Milo um, uh, from Anaheim, California. Um, he is the youngest child of Carol and Peter. He has two older sisters, Leslie and Laurel. Um, his father is Sicil- Italian Sicilian, um, hence the last name. Um, he he has a self-described crooked mouth, having been born with the damaged nerves, causing the left side of his mouth to remain immobile. I've never noticed that. Mm-hmm. And he was also on Gilmore Girls. Mm-hmm. Which I have not watched either. <laughs> Apparently, his first acting role was in an episode of the French Pen- the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Mm-hmm. Um, Already gets number one. Brittany. <laughs> he was actually on Gotham. That's right. He played like he did not play a good guy in that one, if I remember. He played a good no serial killer. I, I completely forgot about that until scrolling through the IMDb. <laughs> So, yeah, the only, the, the only animated Wolverine. Yeah, I I really only know him from um Heroes. Heroes. Yeah. So, but I know that he's gotten a, a the entire cast, but he has gotten a lot of acclaim from from This Is Us. Yeah. Uh, so he's been nominated for an Emmy, and so. I mean. Like, like I haven't seen much of like like you like I've seen um, heroes like I've seen I like, watch a little bit of this does he's a good actor mm-hmm. he, just, he actually doesn't really have I like how they kept uh not that I've seen him, but I like how they kept the continuity because he played Rocky Balboa Jr. in the movie mm-hmm. Rocky Balboa in 2006. Mm-hmm. And then they brought him back in 2018 for Creed II. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. But yeah, he's, it looks like he's done more TV than he has movies. So yeah. I, I remember seeing the commercials and the trailers and stuff for the art of racing in the rain Mm -hmm. Um, but it didn't necessarily look like something i would want to watch so yep and he's cut his teeth on a lot of um the same place a lot of uh actors have he's been on csi and law and and a version of law and order That's what everybody does at some point. <laughs> like, if you're American, you're going to be on at least one episode of CSI, Either CSI or, Law or, or Law and Order. Law and Order, yeah. Either as the victim, or, 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 or as the killer. Yeah, yes. Yeah. You know. <laughs> or, you know, you go you go play a corpse. Yes. Yeah. 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 Corpse, bad guy, sketchy boyfriend. Yep. <laughs> Although apparently he's going to be playing Evil Knievel in an upcoming miniseries. In that ass thing. Ah, I'll have to check that one out. Pretty interesting. I like how the with the back up there. It says that 
he's only in episodes one and episode five. Even though I'm pretty <laughs> sure this is because it's not completed. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, he, his, uh, his resume is not very long. So. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Got to start somewhere. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and this is us, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. T takes up a lot of his time. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, so. I think if that's one that we had all watched and... We're, we're avid fans of we'd be sitting here gushing about it which you know i'm like like i said i've only heard good things about it other than you cry every other minute and i'm like mm -hmm. it's not i mean that's just that it's not it's not my thing it's not what i enjoy I, yeah. but you know if people love it i'm happy I, for them i watched the first two seasons religiously started got through the first couple of season three and it's like yeah i need to take a need to take a breather <laughs> Mm -hmm. I, I will come back to you when you're <laughs> completed your run. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And then it's like you could binge a few episodes and like, okay, I've had enough. I'm gonna go watch something else, and then mm -hmm. go from there. Yeah. And watch will probably get feedback. Oh, natural. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Watch will get feedback from somebody like, no, it's really great. You just need to watch it. It's not that bad. <laughs> I, 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 I I agree with you. It's great, but. I need smaller doses. Yes. <laughs> what? There's one episode per week. Yeah, but I've got other shows that have about the same amount of feels too. Yeah. <laughs> I, so, I have to limit that intake per week. <laughs> so, you know, if you have any disagreements, send your feedback to myshangos.com. <laughs> <laughs> we will tell use us to toast s'mores. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what we're missing on this and, and we'll we'll get back to you <laughs> Lottie's even giggling about that yeah <laughs> she's like you're crazy people yeah. oh right well let's do another one sounds good to me yes that's a little do. short there so and i've already pulled it while you guys are talking <laughs> <laughs> okay save some time <laughs> Yep. Save some time. Okay, so this person is a British actress. Okay. Um, uh, she is from London, England. Uh -huh. uh, birthday is March 26, 1985. So okay. she is younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, me. Is Only older see. by me, by, older than me by two months. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I'm not gonna say. <laughs> uh, let's see. According to her Wikipedia entry, her starring roles in independent films and period dramas have earned her nominations for two uh, British Academy Film Awards, three Golden Globe Awards, two Academy Awards. She's also worked at many Hollywood productions as, and was one of the highest paid actresses in the world in the late 2000s. Hmm. Has she I'm gonna done just... the trip in a blue box? No. Okay. I'm going to throw this one out there. Is it Kira Knightley? Yes! Oh, okay. Ooh, nice, nice one, one. Chrissy. <laughs> That's the second time you've done that because the last time we had the actors out of the hat, you guessed right away. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't remember I don't which know. actor that was, but I did. But <laughs> I, I, I don't know. When you said period drama, I'm like, well, Kira Knightley was in Pride and Prejudice, and I know she's been nominated for awards, so mm -hmm. sure. Anyway, cool. Yep. Kira Knightley. Kira Christina Knightley. OBE. <laughs> oh, nice. So, not quite a dame, but she's working her way up there. Uh, so there, There's a letter of success to this, apparently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've had this discussion before. So. We have. We have. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a rabbit hole. Even then, that's not bad at age 35. Oh, uh, no. So. No. Yeah. 
So she was born in uh, Teddington, which is within Richmond, which is a suburban area of London. Um, both her parents were uh, theater actors. Her uh, mother is Scottish, her father's English. Um, she, her, her n name was actually supposed to be K-I-E-R-A, which is uh, another form of the name Kira, K-I-R-A, after Kira Ivano Ivanova, who was a Soviet figure skater that apparently her dad was a huge fan of. However, um, her mom misspelled the name when she <laughs> went to fill out the paperwork, writing the E before the I. Uh, <laughs> so. that, that, is, that has happened to many a child, I'm sure, yep. in all the hustle and bustle of, of having, having babies. Yeah. In fact, when, 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 I've had, when I've gone in to have my babies, they said, okay, fill out the paperwork before you get induced. <laughs> yeah. Before you pump me full of drugs. <laughs> yes. Make sure everything's correct before yeah. things get crazy. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but anyway, don't want to go down too far that tangent. Yeah. Uh, she has an older brother, Caleb. Um, and uh, so her mother also worked as a playwright. Um, uh, after she ended her acting career and she made sure to introduce her children to theater and ballet at an early age. Um, and apparently Kira requested an agent at the age of three. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, she attended Teddington School. At the age of six, she was diagnosed with dyslexia. Um, but uh, by the time she was 11, um, she had um, uh, figured out how to uh, work with it. Um, although she is uh, still a, uh, she still considers herself a slow reader. Um, she said she was single-minded about acting during her childhood. Um, and she did get that agent she asked for at the age of three when she turned six. <laughs> uh, from then, she started taking on small parts in TV dramas um, and also working in local amateur productions, which included After Juliet, which was written by her mother, and um, a program or play or something called United States, which was written by a drama teacher. Um, she focused on art history and English literature while studying at the Escher College, but then left after a year to pursue acting. Um, her first on-screen appearance was in 1993 in a television, a screen one television episode titled Royal Celebration. Um, and then she went on to uh, do a bunch of TV made for TV films um, in the mid to late 90s, including Innocent Lies, The Treasure Seekers, Coming Home, Oliver Twist, because if you're British, you have to do Shakespeare and Dickens at some point. Uh -huh. uh, um, she played um, Sabe, who is Padme's decoy in mm -hmm. Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Um, which that floored me when I when I learned about that because she was because you know you said her birthday was in 85 she's just a little bit older than me and I was mm -hmm. like and I was 14 when that when that movie came out which was Padme's actual age in the show even though uh, Natalie Portman was a little older mm -hmm. but I was like oh wow so someone who was actually 14 played her her uh her, her decoy I'm like mm -hmm. okay cool <laughs> and then I realized it was Kira Knightley and and like because I found this out you know when she's in Pirates of the Caribbean and all that stuff and I'm like okay that's just bizarre but sure yeah <laughs> yeah my mm -hmm. mind was kind of like wait I I didn't make that connection for a while like wait that that was who that okay oh. yeah <laughs> yeah well those two they look now that they've gotten older it's mm -hmm. not as eerily similar looking but definitely when they were younger yeah I, yeah I would i if like if i tried to conjure like the image of one of them in my head my brain would just get confused yeah like, there were a couple <laughs> there so, were some movie trailers 
Mm-hmm. I was going to say, there's some movie trailers that I would look at. I'm like, okay, is that Natalie Portman or Kira Knightley? And it wouldn't be, you know, they'd have to, you know, start saying the cast. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. now I know who, now, mm-hmm. now I see it. Yeah. Because it's Phantom Menace for one of her hammies. I thought Natalie Portman was playing two roles. <laughs> yeah. Until I thought, oh, no, that's Kira Knightley. Yeah. Okay, sweet. <laughs> Yeah, so that was, uh, uh, yeah, according to their mothers, they even had trouble telling them apart once they were in full makeup. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, her first major role was in a 2001 Walt Disney production feature film, Princess of Thieves, where she plays the daughter of Robin Hood. Wait. <laughs> I remember that one. Holy crap. I think it was on Disney Channel. I don't know if it was a Disney Channel movie, but I remember seeing it on Disney Channel, I think. Uh, maybe? I don't know. Maybe I'm misremembering. I've never but I remember, heard of it. I remember seeing it. I do. And I, it was it was a made-for-TV thing. It was fine. I enjoyed it for what it was. It was a wonderful world of Disney. Oh, okay. In 2001, Malcolm McDowell was in it as Sheriff John, Jonathan Hyde as Prince John, Stuart Wilson as Robin Hood. Yep. Yeah, okay. I was like, I remember that uh, one. And might have won. I don't remember, but I mean, I was the right age. So I, yeah. Well, I you know, the, it. the early 2000s were kind of a weird time for Disney. Yeah, yeah they were. True. So, but yeah, now now that you say that, I'm like, oh my gosh, I remember that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, so to prepare for that film, uh, she trained uh, for several weeks in archery, fencing, and horse riding, which I'm sure that that fencing uh, came in handy a little later. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that, as we will uh-huh. see. Yeah. Um, she uh, uh, had a role in a 2002 miniseries adaptation of Dr. Shivago. So that's one that gets made over and over again. Wasn't it done, wasn't it done recently too? Yeah, oh, I'm sure it probably okay. has been. Like, that's just one of those. Mm-hmm. That gets I don't think I've seen any ad- <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's just like that. Yeah. Uh, um, so uh, she did, she still didn't really like break through as an actress until 2002, where she did Bend It Like Beckham. That's right. I forgot she was in that. Yep. I haven't oh. seen it probably since 2002. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, gosh, now now that you're saying all these things, I'm like, oh my gosh, I remember all this. I didn't actually see the movie, but I remember, I mean, you're going to get to this one eventually, or soon, yep. you know, when Pirates came out, and everyone was saying, that's the girl from Bend It Like Beckham, and I was like, oh yeah, that was that movie. Yeah. Okay, weird, but okay, we're going with it. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, so <laughs> that was 2002, 2003. She lands a role of Elizabeth Swan in the Pirates of the Caribbean. What would become the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise? Obviously, uh-huh. the first movie, The Curse of the Black Pearl, which was based on one of my absolute favorite attractions of all time in any <laughs> Disney park, Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, where uh, they took the attraction and inspired a movie and in turn inspired changes to the attraction <laughs> it's just a one big cycle it is and that was that was that that was that odd time again in disney's history they were they did a country bears movie they did a haunted mansion movie those ones didn't go quite so well but pirates of the caribbean took off like wildfire and yeah mm-hmm. yeah because it was uh it was not yeah, you know, it was not expected to actually do that well. It had a hundred thirty-five million dollar budget, um, which obviously there are a lot of special effects in that one. You know, anything involving water is usually very expensive for filming, and then you know you've got the whole 
the pirates turning into skeletons eerily familiar to D D a couple weeks ago uh, <laughs> walking yeah. skeletons who can brandish yeah. swords um, yep. so uh obviously all that cgi uh is expensive expensive plus it starred johnny depp who at the time was a very well respected and high high paid actor so um that being said it did uh do well and opened number one at the box office and became one of the highest grossing movies of the year and made 654 million dollars worldwide so that's not bad <laughs> not at all and that has uh since uh snowballed into a whole series of movies which she is not in all of them she is in the first three Uh and uh makes a very short appearance in number five Uh so and she's not in the fourth one at all yeah yep so which i've only seen the first three but you know i'm not worried about spoilers because yeah not yeah anyway they tie up some loose ends from mm-hmm. three at the end mm-hmm. of five and that includes having to to bring elizabeth back so yep um yeah but yeah and she is you know she, i love that elizabeth swan they took that character and did not allow like like the, her in universe the entire world around her is trying to fit her into this cliche mold mm-hmm. of women you know in the 18th century essentially you know where having to wear corset being all pretty pretty wearing fancy dresses from france and all that and get you know having to marry a good man uh you know having to make a smart match and you know make, make sure she marries you know not below her station and all that because she's the daughter of the governor and all those things and she is in love with the blacksmith's apprentice and wants to be a pirate essentially so. <laughs> <laughs> honestly i, I will can, i will can drink it can drink rum like the best of the pirates exactly <laughs> i i will i will say this because i do i do read some regency romance which is generally that that time period and there are some things that elizabeth says that have either like she is directly influenced characters in regency romance like the whole you know corset you know doesn't want to wear a corset you know wants to run off and be a pirate or have adventures and sorts of things or i don't know maybe the romance novels influence her the point the point being that character that that type of character has gotten around a little bit in in different um genres and formats and and versions not that i'm complaining about this because elizabeth swan as a character is a lot of fun and i love mm-hmm. I, one of the things i love is 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 in um, the third movie where you know she's elected pirate king because mm-hmm. jack sparrow basically <laughs> both votes are in and you know she's just like she's got you know there and the the scene i'm trying to remember how it goes but you know that they're they're parlaying with um mm-hmm. Davy Jones and someone is is objecting to what she's doing and she turns around and just goes king and so you know what what what's uh, what she says goes and then like mm-hmm. you, you 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 do of course her outfit as a uh, as pirate king um it's it's piratey but there's also a little bit of a little bit of girliness to it not a lot mm-hmm. but i yeah. just just kind of the way she wears it yeah. And so it's not like she, her character is not a man with boobs. Let's say that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hope that mm-hmm. it's very worn out and tired. But so as a, as a, as a female pirate, as a, a, a female character in an adventure, she holds her own. She's her own character, but she doesn't become a cliche or what would become the cliche that we kind of have mm-hmm. nowadays. Mm-hmm. She, she's a well-rounded character. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep, and she's wonderful. And Kira Knightley plays her lovely, love, lover, <laughs> lovely lead. I, I can talk. <laughs> <laughs> plays her great. She yep. does a good job. That's what we'll I'm trying to say. We'll speak like pirates. Yes. yes. <laughs> make up, make up our own words. Yeah. <laughs> um, she is also in one of my absolute favorite Christmas movies of all time. Love Actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. So, uh, 
where she is part of un unknowingly part of a love triangle ish, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that that story. Uh, yeah. She plays uh -huh. Juliet, uh, who uh she marries uh right before Christmas. Um at the beginning of the movie, she marries a guy named Peter, played by Cheat Vault Edge of Four. <laughs> um, and, uh, but the best man who is Peter's best friend, Mark, played by Andrew Lincoln, of all people, <laughs> <from> The Walking <laughs> Dead, um, is desperately in love with Juliet, but she thinks that he hates her when really he's not in love with her. Uh, so, and uh, if I'm sure, even if you've not seen the movie, you've seen probably some meme diversion of Mark outside their flat playing music on the boom box with the giant poster boards. <laughs> uh -huh. Yep. Uh, so that's, that's been uh -huh. memed uh, a lot. Uh, I think it's a yeah, parody. I think I've seen it in a few like oh, yeah. sketches. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So um no, oh, that's one of my favorite Christmas movies, um, and it gave her well. Not that they really in, they don't interact those characters, but I'm sure that on set at some point she probably got to cross paths with Emma Thompson, who apparently she idolizes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and then she was in a 2004 um uh historical adventure film adaptation if you want to call it that of king arthur um this uh, version yeah, with clive one. owen as uh -huh. uh, king arthur i have actually seen this um and she plays yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I saw it in theaters and i was like eh, okay mm -hmm. and then the next semester i was because uh, i was still in college so next next semester i was in a history of england class and the, the professor uh he hated that one because it's like it is so not king arthur <laughs> uh -huh. <clears throat> but that's I'm another discussion i'm trying to remember if i seen it or not i i i've always liked the king of, like i've always liked king of the legends so i've seen quite a few adaptations and i can't remember if i've seen this one it's largely forgettable. I'm trying, I mean, I remember the poster. I'm trying to remember really what all happens, but it was kind of, it wasn't very good. Yeah, I, it was, it was okay. I only watched it because, um, I can't, I can't say his name because I can't speak Welsh. What's his face from forever is in it. Oh, he Eon, yeah. Griff yeah. Grufford or whatever? Yeah. yeah. It actually is pronounced Griffith. Griffith? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's Welsh. It's, it's Welsh. Welsh. But, yeah. uh, Mr. Fantastic from those other yes. Fantastic yes. Four movies. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Depending on where your, your fandoms lie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, or, Her or he was in the Horatio Hornblower series as, yes. I think, Horatio. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he was. And, and he, he was. was uh, don't know his character's name, but he was in Titanic too. Yes, mm -hmm. he was. He was the guy. He was the Eddie. Is anyone alive out there? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. You'd, you'd remember him if you've yeah. seen the movie. But we've covered him in a in in. A, I know. We pulled his name a out of hat, so you can go back and listen to that one, whichever. Yes. Is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like I said, all the all the people on the list. Well, we are talking about we are talking about a Brit here. There's only twelve actors. We've determined. Yes. We've already established that. So. Yes. yes, there's a lot of interconnectedness. Mm -hmm. There is indeed. <laughs> yep. Anyway, back to Kira Knightley. Yes. Uh, so in uh, 2005 um, is when she did what many consider one of her best works, and for some, I guess, probably their favorite adaptation of Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. <sighs> Which, the, the funny yeah. I'll, I'll i'll take this one yeah <laughs> yeah uh the the funny thing about pride and prejudice just in a general sense is now there there is a jane austen fandom it, it, it exists um there the funny thing is people get very territorial about which version is their favorite whether it's the 95 colin firth version or the kira knightley version and for me personally it I am can. like, 
I'm like, if you've got the five hours, watch the 95 one. If you only have a few hours, just, just a little, just an afternoon or something, watch the Kira Knightley one. Both are great. And mm -hmm. Kira Knightley is, is, she's a very different Elizabeth than the one, than, than Jennifer Ale in um, the 95 one. But the whole story is very different. So it's like, you can't really compare the two other than they're both a Pride and Prejudice adaptation. But you know, even though they're different, they're both, they both have, um, they're both, they're both true to the source material, which is kind of an odd thing to say, because some people are like, well, there's only one, there only, can only be one definitive, and this is what Jane Austen meant, and blah, 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 and I'm like, well, as long as you stick to the spirit of it, it's mm -hmm. still pretty good, and, you know, it's, it, and, you know, Kira Knightley is, she's, she's a really, really good Elizabeth Bennet. In fact, now that like looking back on it, probably the reason she got that 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 role is probably because of her role as Elizabeth Swan. Because Elizabeth is a probably a fantasy version of 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 um, Lizzie Bennet. Honestly, I'm I'm just gonna put put it out there right now and say it is if if Elizabeth Bennet was uh, uh, in Pirates of the Caribbean, you would have Elizabeth Swan. I think because uh -huh. she she is for her time for that for that time period where when Jane Austen was writing she's kind of the tomboy she's the adventurer she's I mean you know Austen was writing in a specific time period and she was in that time period so you don't have any of the modern sensibilities with it but sort of that those character archetypes of you know being you know very forceful speaking your mind being you know being a little a, a little embarrassed of your family <laughs> and your social standing but also being very loving and caring toward them um so yeah i i kind of i mean this is probably going to be sacrilege in some circles and i don't care <laughs> <laughs> but i i really I, I think you know the way the way she played their character in in pirates same way she played uh, Lizzie Bennett in in Pride and Prejudice, mm. and that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> it's just well, a, little, a little more formal and less zombie pirates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, others agreed with you with her portrayal because she got a Best Actress nomination uh, for both the Golden Globes and the Academy Awards for that performance. Um, and actually, her Academy Award nomination uh, made her the third youngest nominee. Um, uh, for uh, a, back, a best actress award. Um, although she did not get a BAFTA nomination, <laughs> so. Uh, let's see. So and she went on to do the second and third in the Pirates. Um. So. Um, that was uh, Dead Man's Chest, and then at World at World's End. Uh, then she went on to do some more period pieces. Um, and uh, so uh, that gets her to the late early two thousands. Um, where she did some stuff that I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of very British stuff. Uh, so um, she played a 18th century duchess in a pure drama called The Duchess um, in 2008. Um, Um, she was going to do a film adaptation of King Lear, again, Shakespeare, um, which was going to star her and Anthony Hopkins, but it was canceled due to the uh, financial recession. Um, she made her West End debut um, in um, the comedy The Misanthrope um, in late 2009. 
So yeah, she's done um, more like period type stuff and some stage work. Not anything that I recognize. So. Oh, she did an, uh, an adaptation of Anna Karenina. <laughs> like you do. Uh, <laughs> she, she definitely does a lot of great uh, period piece work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh -huh. she does. Um, she did one of the Jack Ryan <laughs> movies with Chris Pine uh -huh. in 2014. That's an actually, that's a good that's a good um, reboot for the Jack Ryan. I actually enjoyed <laughs> Harrison Ford did good, but then adding Chris Pine to it was a whole new twist that gave it a little oomph. <laughs> um, she was in the Imitation Game uh, alongside Benedict Cumberbatch, where he. I still need to do that. So that, that's still on a, it is sitting on my DVD shelf, and, and Brittany, I'm right there with the eyes. Still need to watch. It. Yeah, <laughs> she plays a, a cryptanalyst, uh, Joan Clark, who has worked on the team that helped uh, break the uh, the Germans' Enigma code. Um, so she got a, a, a her second Academy Award nomination for that for Best Supporting Actress. Uh, do, do, do. So, uh, like I said, she makes a short cameo appearance in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. So that was in 2017. Um, she was in uh, Disney's adaptation of The Nutcracker, The Nutcracker in the Four Realms. So, and that's where she's kind of at as far as um, career-wise, so. Uh, she got married in 2013. She's had two little girls, Edie and Delia. Um, so, and then she's done some charity, she has, uh, some charity work um, for like Amnesty International, um, Oxfam. Uh, so. UN. So. That is Kira Knightley. So, quite the uh, quite the career, and hopefully she uh, gets to do a lot more. I'm mm -hmm. sure she will. I don't imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure she will. Just like everything's on hold right now. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, that is true. But uh, yeah. Yeah, but she's she's done mostly film and uh, some theater. Not a lot of television, so 
which there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, and of course, being a Brit, she's checked off a large number of the must do at some point in your <laughs> in your uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> in your career in your career. So yes. some Shakespeare. <laughs> Period dramas. The only thing she really hasn't done is anything in Harry Potter or or uh, Doctor Who. Yeah, right. Give her give her time. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yeah. Although I don't know, if she's necessarily you know, like a sci-fi fantasy type person. Other than other than Pirates of the Caribbean. True. No, so, she real she really has not done everything that um, almost everything she's done has been just kind of like real world type stuff. So yeah. But well, you never know. They say if they do uh, like a historical Doctor Who episode, that is true. That's what we can. They could bring her in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, the blue box comes a call, and you don't say no. <laughs> <laughs> Unless she does want to say no, and then she wants someone to take her place. You've got four volunteers right here. <laughs> yep, yes. yep, 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 yep. I can, can guarantee I can her to her caliber when it comes to acting, but we'll sure give it a shot. I can affect a British accent. It probably sucks, but mm-hmm. I can do it. <laughs> hey, if Dick Van Dyke can do it and Mary Poppins, so can we. Yep. <laughs> or, or, or if the TARDIS mysteriously happens to crash land in Wisconsin or Indiana, hey, yeah. we'd help the doctor out. Exactly. Utah, come back, yeah. The doctor's been to Utah. Really? So, That's yeah. true, except he's been down to the southern part of the state. <laughs> It's like you need to come up here the, where the, the mountains are. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, take Ugh. this take this TARDIS skiing. <laughs> Something. I mean, I live I, I live down at the bottom of a canyon. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. That's that far, Chrissy. Huh? <laughs> we don't want to go crash. Yeah. Well, no. Okay, not not right at the bottom, but like the you know, no. next to the road that goes up to the ski resorts. Anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, anyway. well do we want to do any more or are we good i think we're probably good, good. Okay. that was a good one um so if any of our listeners want to send in feedback about their favorite actor or actress or any of these things that we've talked about send us feedback at fiveishfangirls at gmail.com you can go to our website which is the fiveishfangirls.com and there you will find links to our social media you can leave comments on our facebook or instagram or even on our youtube channel um, you can also uh, find places to download us where we're, uh, we are available wherever you find fine podcasts. We're, we're a fine podcast, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, if, and if you want to help support the show, we have a Patreon, we have an Amazon store, we have Kofi, and we have a merchandise a Redbubble store. Nice. So go to our website with, like, like I said, thebyfishfangirls.com. You can find links to all that great stuff. Thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting and sending us uh, comments, feedback, and all that great stuff. And hopefully, we're we're helping entertain you during during this time and trying trying to find some fun stuff that's going on. So mm-hmm. hope you all are staying staying safe and well. Yep, yep, yep. So, um, and of course, uh, stay tuned to all our social media, especially YouTube, as uh, that's where the D and D stuff will go. So, mm-hmm. yes, we're still doing our D and D. Yep. Uh, games. So. Yep. All right. Well, with that, we shall sign off for this week. This is for Amy Beth. I'm saying good night. This is Chrissy saying good night from Salt Lake City. This is Holly from Wisconsin saying good evening. And this is Rachel in Annapolis, Indiana. You like pain? Try wearing a corset. to the Five-ish Fangirls podcast. You can find more episodes and information at the fiveishfangirls.com. Any and all books, movies, games, and any other forms of media mentioned are owned and operated by the respective copyright holders. No copyright infringement is intended or implied. 
If you wish to support the show, the easiest way is to leave us a rating and review. More ratings and reviews will make it easier for others to find the show. If you wish to support us monetarily, you can do so at patreon.com slash fiveish fangirls podcast. All money goes towards fees and equipment to keep the show going. For official Fiveish Fangirls merchandise, visit redbubble.com slash people slash Fiveish Fangirls. We love hearing from our listeners and encourage feedback. You can email us at fiveishfangirls at gmail.com. You can also like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Fiveish Fangirls. Thank you so much for listening and may the squee be with you.